Welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ollie Hubbard. This is the second episode in a series on intelligence, so if you haven't caught the first, it's just there. So we've covered the basics of what separates human and animal intelligence, and it's still a really big question. But maybe something a bit more practical is how can we increase our intelligence as humans. The connections between the memory cells in the hippocampus, which we touched on last week, require a gene called NR2B to function. This gene allows your brain to associate events, and it's therefore kind of responsible for all learning. So naturally, we got some mice and rats and overexposed this gene in them. Dr. Zhou Tsien led this research, and the first mice with more NR2B had better memories and outperformed the normal mice. And since then, they produced rats which have a memory three times the original smart mice. A graduate student working on the project described it like getting Michael Jordan and then making super Michael Jordan. But these enhanced mice and rats don't seem to have the charisma of Michael Jordan. In fact, a lot of them seem really timid. And it's been suggested that with greater memories, they also retain the really vivid memory of being hurt or being rejected and not fitting in. And this prevents them from taking risks. This might reveal why humans don't have super memories. That reproduction and survival requires a bit of risk taking. Or it might just be a sign that we don't really want to remember everything. Similar studies have also been done on two genes called CRAB activator and CRAB repressor. And they've produced fruit flies with photographic memories. Although I assume it's like a photographic memory for a fruit for a fruit fry, for a, for a fruit fly. Which is still pretty slow. Short. Essentially, humans have a fixed amount of CRAB activator, and it limits how much we can learn in a given time before it replenishes. I mean, this is the reason why when you cram before an exam, it feels overwhelming and you just can't get any more information in. So studies are looking into increasing this activator and the implications that would have on human intelligence and your ability to cram for the next test. But if we're trying to get superhuman intelligence, perhaps we should look at the people who already have it. You may have heard of savants. These brilliant humans have superhuman abilities, often in maths, music, memorization, or art. Like memorizing a whole book in half an hour, or replaying a symphony after only listening once. They also often have low IQs and low social skills. But how do they do it? Well, there is a lot of debate about what causes savants' abilities. But one theory is that damage to a small part of the left temporal lobe prevents the brain from cleaning out excess or irrelevant memories. This also allows the right hemisphere, which is more artistic, to gain a bit more control. Therefore, we might be able to give people savant-like abilities by silencing that small part of the left temporal lobe. But if you get a massive increase in memory, but a decrease in social skills, overall, is that an increase in intelligence? People with photographic memories also have similar abilities to savants. And research is starting to suggest maybe it's not because they have perfect memories, but they just can't forget. I mean, I used to think that forgetting was just a passive process that happened with time. But now research is suggesting it's an active process, and it actually requires a receptor called DAMB. So if you decrease this receptor, you decrease your ability to forget. But one of America's four citizens with photographic memory, Jill Price, says that daily life is just a constant battle between past and present. I mean, she can remember every single detail of every single day of her life. I mean, imagine just all the information that yesterday had. I mean, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. This is so much. No, I had oats. But I always have oats. So again, you've got to ask, if you've increased memory or a certain type of intelligence, I mean, have you really increased intelligence overall? But we might not just be limited by having to balance the modifications of our brain. Our total brain power might actually be capped by the laws of physics. For example, last episode I mentioned the ASPM gene, which played a massive role in increasing our brain capacity. So could we modify that again to get bigger and better brains? Possibly, but a bigger head would require more energy and that would generate more heat and then you'd be changing the narrow temperature requirements that cells and enzymes need to work. So they'd break, and then you'd need to change blood flow to the brain, size of the neck, and size of the birth canal. So it seems like the only debate for now is how we use the brain power we've already got. And seeing as all modifications have drawbacks as well as benefits, I think the answer might be in short-term and reversible changes. For example, a physicist or an artist might get to work, and then silence that little part of the left temporal lobe, increasing their memory exponentially. And they get to work using that memory. But then at the end of the day, 
they turn it back on. They regain their state of mind and they go back home normal. But this is just speculation and for now I believe the most important thing is just to appreciate the balanced intelligence you do have and to use it in your own unique way, whatever that may be. Ultimately, the limits of our biology might mean that we expand our intelligence externally using technology. We'll be exploring that in the next episode, along with artificial intelligence. So, if you're keen for that, just hit subscribe and I'd love to see you there. Also, if you came all this way without watching the first episode, I am seriously impressed. But also, I'm sure you'll absolutely love it, so it's just there. And, as always, stay curious.